In this video, I'm going to show you how to load the quilt on the frame. But before I load my quilt, I'm going to add, I always wipe down the machine table and the rails to make sure that there's no stray threads. Lint and stray threads will always cause you trouble. So it's a good habit to get into to wipe down your machine, make sure there's no problem between each quilt because it's exposed and easily available. Okay, now we're going to load, and the first part that I load is the quilt top. The quilt top will always go on to this roller here. Now, it's easy to remember which roller. Now, we actually have it marked also. It says top, but the top always goes onto the part of the frame that can be lifted because when you're quilting, you can lift your top. So if you ever get confused, just remember the quilt top always goes onto the lifting roller. Now to get it on the right direction, the easiest way to do it is to put your quilt right side up the way you want to see it. I lift this up to the other roller. So this is the roller that's attached here. And that way the top side of it is exposed and the top will get attached to it. Now, I always throw the quilt up over the back because this is the way it's going to be when you quilt it and it makes it easy to remember which way to put it on. So before I come to the machine, I've already measured my quilt top and my quilt back to make sure that the backing is a little bit bigger on every side, about three inches bigger than the top. I already know that that is done because I've uh, done it over on my measuring table. I marked the center with the pin, and now I'm going to clamp that on. Now I am loading using red snappers. It's not the only way to load for sure. Some people like zippers, some people like pinning. There are lots of ways to do it, but I think this is the fastest and easiest way. These little clamps are temporary holders. I'll put them on here, and then I get the full-sized clamp and clamp down the edge. Now, as I do this, whether you're using red snappers or whether you're using a zipper, whether you're using pins on your zipper, however you're doing it, you want to make sure that the edge of your quilt is attached straight, not curvy, and that way it'll go on square. I have it up here over the roller, and now I will roll that on. Now, I had these cogs here um, unlatched. There is, if you come a little closer with the camera, I want you to see this little cog here. There's a little uh, peg that will slip in the slot and then my cogs are engaged. They will turn one way and not the other. When I need to turn them the opposite direction, I just push that peg out and twist it a little bit clockwise and now it's locked and it can turn either way easily. So in the loading process, you might lock and unlock these cogs a few times and then as you progress through your quilt, you will um, roll up the quilt. When you're done, you will unroll all of it and take it off. So I'm rolling this on straight, making sure that I don't roll in any wrinkles. As soon as that falls down like that, I just flip it out of the way. Now I'm going to do the exact same procedure with the back of the quilt. Now the back of the quilt goes onto this one and it actually says on the canvas that it's the bottom. So I want to load the bottom edge, and I've marked it with a pin here, to the center, just like I did the other. The only difference is the backing needs to be face down. So what happens is you've got the backing face down and the quilt top face up, and so together with the batting in the middle, they make the quilt. And so throw it up over the back again. I can see that I'm, I've got the wrong side up, and I will clamp that on again, marking my center and clamping that with one of my temporary clamps. I'll come out here and do the same. You want to be sure that you're not stretching. I actually have them measured and I have measuring tapes here 
sewn on. I have a YouTube video that teaches how I do that, but that's a different video, not today's video. And now again, I will clamp that on with the larger clamp, making sure that I keep that edge straight. Took off the temporaries there in my pocket. And now I will roll this on. Again, I want it to roll on nice and smooth and straight. Now once that falls down, again, I'm gonna flip it over this way. Now I'm going to load the top edge of the back to this roller. Now, the roller is the one with the canvas, and it must come down around the, the plain pole. Now, this plain pole is called a dead bar or a leveling bar, and it sets the level of your quilt. So, I'm gonna pull the machine all the way forward to the left out of the way. And again, I have the center marked with a pin And I snap on another temporary holder. If that's in the way, you can get this to the front. And now I put on the last clamp. Making sure again that the edge of my quilt is straight along the top and thoroughly pinned or clamped or whatever method you're choosing to use, you have the edge thoroughly attached to the canvas. Now you're ready to get out the, now I want to engage this cog here. Now I'm ready to get out my batting and lay it down and baste it across the top. If you baste, you can pin if you prefer. But I'm going to lay the batting across here and then put it down through this groove. All right, now I'm ready to add the backing, I mean the batting, sorry. So I put that down between the two layers of fabric. The top is flipped this way and there's this gap between the two rollers. And I spread that out I know that I've cut my, back, my batting just a little bit bigger than my top and I am now ready to baste across the top. Now I like to baste my batting down. Some people do, some people don't. It's your choice. I'm putting it on a basting stitch and with the lightning stitch, this basting stitch offers a great baste. I just sew across the top here. If you have it pushed all the way back, you can push your machine against the bar and it will give you a perfectly straight line because that bar constrains the machine. So I'm as far up as I can stitch when I'm stitching a basting stitch to the top of my batting. And there we go. I know I have a straight line there. And I bring the backing, I mean the top, the quilt top, up. This needs to be disengaged so it will roll freely. And I'm going to put the center pin on my center mark. I can see it right here. Also, it's helpful if you want to make a mark on your dead bar here so that you can see where your center is easily. And then I put that top edge of my quilt down about a half inch. And I can judge pretty well that I'm a half inch away from that stitching, keeping my quilt straight there. And I can baste the top. Now, 
I'm going to go from the right to the left, knowing that the machine might stitch a little better in the other direction. So it might be a good idea to cut your threads over here and then go from the left to the right instead of right to the left. Now you'll notice I have a strange hopping foot on here. It is our new cup foot and on our computerized machines. It's what we prefer. So I am now ready to base down the sides and quilt this quilt. And that's the end of loading.